All right, people, here we go. Thank you. Um, sorry, I was just trying to get the, the monitors set properly for this because this is going to be good. All right, I want to dive right in. I don't want to uh, spend a lot of time messing around. And what's going to happen is towards the end of this, I will get questions in, but I, I purposely lowered today's stream down and put on the ultra low latency so that those of you in the chat can get in your questions and your comments faster. There will be lots of interaction today. So by the time you hear what I'm saying, your ability to type things in should be relatively close. All right, that's on purpose because I want to make sure that we get all the way through this. So I'm gl glad to see a bunch of my people here. Uh, big up to all of my members who have joined us today. Let's go. <laughs> I know it actually wasn't the Starbucks line. I was trying to uh, find the easy way to reset the latency settings and i remembered where we moved it it used to be in preferences but we moved it and yeah, it took me a second to remember that because i don't normally mess with that anyway so um this is something i like to do every year i can't even remember where i got it from where it started for me but it's something that i love to do every year and uh it's kind of a a, a big deal to me so i'm hoping that it helps some of you because i find it to be very effective uh one thing i i think that we should clear the air on and i just want to make sure that everybody understands this when i say whatever i'm saying i am putting information that's in my head out in the universe you can do with it whatever you want you can accept it you can ignore it you can say you know what i like this part let me modify it a little bit and do it my way I, that's up to you but i don't feel comfortable sleeping at night without putting this information out because somebody needs to hear it that's the main reason why i come here and put out all of this information i think that i just don't want anybody to feel like you know i think i'm right about all of this stuff this is all an experiment bro like the in this in my dad used to have a, a joke and it was printed by his desk and it was like this life is a test it's an only a test because if it were a real life it would have came with instructions and I've been looking at that thing since I was nay about four years old. I started to read about then. And I think I've understood that for a long time. This is why I'm not afraid to break stuff. This is why I'm not afraid to F things up and do it again. Because everything is learnable and most things are fixable. And so I highly believe that everything is learnable. Like I know Jack all about flying a freaking rocket, but given the opportunity and, you know, a couple years of training, I could easily sit in, you know, rocket the raccoon seat and fly a rocket. I just see it like that. I don't see learning something new is scary. That's just not me. I might be broken. I am willing to admit, although it's frustrating to me because I wish everybody else could see it the way I see it, not because I'm looking to build a cult, but because I know how freeing it is. I am completely fearless of effing things up. I have no concern over effing anything up. I don't have any ego over effing something up and having to fix it. I don't knock myself down because I did it wrong. None of that. And I have to say, I want to put this out there that this is a privilege. The privilege to absolutely not give a rat's is a privilege. There's my button. Okay. I do understand it's a privilege. And the reason why I keep talking about this is because I want other people to give themselves permission to forgive yourself for anything. I guess that's the dopest part about growing up Catholic. <laughs> we can just go into the little box. 
forgive me, Father, for I have sinned. Uh, what you did? I completely effed this up. All right, say 50 11 Hail Marys and go on about your business. Maybe that's one of the ben- that one. There's not a lot. <laughs> I'll give you that one. Maybe that's one of the benefits of growing up Catholic is giving yourself permission to forgive yourself. Right? Now, some of y'all got different, you know, feelings about your higher powers or whatever. I don't, I don't, I don't give a damn. It's not me. I'm out. I'm not here to disrespect what you think. But I just want to remind you that, I mean, outside of burning down the house and, 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 and taking yourself out of this world, you could do everything again. So I just want to shake the fear. Okay. So here's the reason why I do the mid year reset, because as you know, my, my claim to fame is I'm powered by my purpose. Right. And I know some people are still fighting and trying to figure out how to find their purpose, but I'm going to have to start questioning some of y'all because at this point, like, you have ability to change your purpose. You can completely do that. That's everything is, like I said, everything is changeable. Everything is learnable. Everything you screw it up, you can do it again. But at this point, if you haven't found your purpose, I'm going to shock G you until you stop what you're doing because I'm about to ruin the image and the style that you used to. It is imperative that you find that Literally between now and the end of the year, it's not really a deadline type of thing. It's something, but give yourself a deadline because what happens when you leave yourself with open deadlines, I'm going to get around to finding my purpose one day. You ain't going to do it. You ain't going to do it. Right? So give yourself this goal for the rest of the year. Find, refine, redefine, hone, accept, change, deliver, Anything about that that has to do with your purpose, I need you to get on that. Start by discussing the importance of what of your life. What are your values? What is the most important thing to you? Because knowing your purpose will absolutely fuel your content creation journey. And 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 no, no, no dude, finding your purpose will fuel your whole mother life, but. I, I, we're talking about content creating today, so I'm going to kind of keep it tight. Uh, I got to definitely say big ups to my sis, uh, Diane in the house. This is something that we speak on every time we break bread, right? Every opportunity I'm on the road and I get to break bread with my sister D. This is something that we talk about. We could talk about this mess for hours over a bag of my damn uh, jalapeno Cheetos, Diana. Renee Gladney. I don't even know her middle name, Renee. <laughs> I just made that up. <laughs> uh, yes, this, I, I don't know how to explain it, people. And I'm happy to meet with you in, in, in Discord. I'm happy to talk with you about it. I'm happy to just try to come up with exercises. But you know what? I'm going to be dead honest. I ain't did none of that. I ain't read no book. I ain't looking at no chart. I didn't roll no dice. I didn't see no psychic. I just came up. This is what I'm finna do. I just woke up one day and instead of going straight to the bathroom, scratching my butt, I just woke up and say, today, this is what I'm doing for the rest of my life. And anybody that stands in my way, catch these hands. <laughs> that was that was it. Not, not in literal sense. I'm, I'm not in the fist of cuffs. I'm a lover, not a fighter. But I literally just... Woke up one day and I said, this is my purpose. I'm all in on this. I think the thing that screws people up is that we are trying to find our purpose based on cash flow. My purpose ain't got nothing to do with cash flow. You know what I'm saying? My purpose is uh, is the impact. You know what? I happen to be wearing this shirt today available in the merch store. Let me move this out of the way. I decided I wanted to make an impact on the world and I decided what I was fitting to do to get there and impact over influence. I decided to start working on making sure I was making my dent in the universe. I heard a old speech by my old boss, Steve jobs talking about making a dent in the universe. And I was like, 
I don't think I'm doing that. Do I make people happy as hell on the Saturday night, you know, banging banging the music and everybody, oof, 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 oof. yes, you know, was I rocking out parties of 10,000 folks on the weekend and making them smile? Yes, but I didn't feel like I was making a dent. I was getting a lot of people drunk, <laughs> you know. I was helping people get married and have kids and things of that nature, but I don't feel like I was making a dent. So I'm going to I'm gonna just say, and I'm going to get off this box real quick because we wasted like 10 minutes talking about this. I don't know how you do it. Come and talk to me. Talk to somebody else who's find their thing. But the faster you get on your purpose, the better. Now, some things that will help you. Okay, it was the Stanford speech. Thank you, uh, uh, Jeremy, for, help, for helping me remember that, right? Thank you for helping me remember that. Um, you know what, Miss D.? Uh, we got to have a, a, a FaceTime call or something because you be on the road and we ain't, we ain't talking a minute. So <laughs> uh, other than just texting each other. So definitely we need to keep up. And, you know, hey, big ups to Kills, right? I just want to say hi to Kills. Um, yeah. Anyway, we'll figure it out. Uh, figure out what you want and and, and <laughs> figure out what you want to be when you grow up and be that. Yes, exactly. Okay. So. Uh, that was a that was a slip of the tongue, <laughs> Tati. Definitely not a waste. It's probably the most important thing I would say today. If you stop watching this right now, please don't. But if you stop watching this right now, please let's let's find a way to help you find this purpose. Like I, it it is an absolute game changer. All of the people that I know that are doing things, they know where they're going, right? Uh, you know what? Maybe this will screw some of us up, right? I used to get in the car with my gramps right and i'm like pops where are we going i don't know we just going for a ride baby that's what my gramps used to say you know and we would get in that big old uh what do you call that joint the big chrysler the, i mean the huge chrysler right that thing that that if it hits something it's gone but the car is perfect that was my grandpa's chrysler right and then he, they had a plymouth version of it later uh we would get in that joint and just hit the road and just drive in them big leather seats with a little tuck, you know. And Grandpa, he drove with the one hand here and the one hand across the long seat. Remember front seats used to go all the way across, but they felt like they was a mile long when you was a little kid? Grandpa, you'd just be like that, and he'd be hitting the road, you know. And I'd roll out the window when I was a little kid, and my head be out the window like this. Just like, and then doing one of these. <laughs> you know what I mean? Y'all know that? Y'all remember that feeling of sticking your head out? Mama, daddy, grandpa window be like. Yeah, it was just like that, like a puppy. And I loved that the Plymouth boat. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. Oh, that's exactly what it is. Deuce in the quarter. Dang, Rich, you be knowing stuff. All right, Rich, oh, like me. Uh, there was definitely... That where I discovered exploration. I learned exploration from my grandpa Dave because we would just get in the whip and go with no place, no direction, no whatever. And that was cool. But now I realize that if you do life like that, just go, it might not work out. Now, I agree with the exploring side of it, yes. I agree with the freedom to go with and with will you ever. Yes. I ex agree with exploring to the point where you don't necessarily have a destination, but just go. Yes. As long as while you're doing it, you have some sort of thing that you're looking to obtain from that. If that is relaxation, accept that. If that is, I just want to learn this new neighborhood where I live at, accept that. But don't just aimlessly go. Like, there's always some aim. If your aim is to relax, get away from the, the hus and bus, and just kind of enjoy yourself, that's a different thing, right? I don't want to confuse the two. I just want to make sure there's always this underlying message of purpose in there, right? Right? The, the, the station wagon, and just hit it. Boom. You just be like, boom, 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 right? Uh, sometimes we would sing songs in the back. Sometimes we would pay I Spy with my little eye. But, all right, now... Here's, a, here's, a, here's another thing. Uh, I want to add a theme to this. How many of you folks, how many of you folks either recently have or just have a good memory of changing your job and the way you worked that first week of a new job? How many of y'all folks remember that? If you remember that, give me some sort of reaction in the chat. I can't even think of one right now. But if you remember what it was like 
that the way you worked on that first week of a job. Now, some of y'all ain't never changed no job. That's cool. I'm gonna, I'm gonna like that. Hey, big up on you, right? If you've never changed a job and it's been 50, 1100 years since you started your job, how about this one? How many of you know what that feeling feels like of the work that you do the week before you go on vacation, the day before you go on vacation? What does that scenario look like? If you recognize that and you understand that, give me some emotes to let me know you about this life, right? Uh, mm, I don't care what the top is. Uh, leave me at the bottom and let me work for it. Hey, I like that. I like that. Boom. <laughs> oh, count the water towers. All right. I feel you. All right. I see people are starting to get into that. You know what I was thinking of recently? Uh, Nelly Furtado. <laughs> so that's the first things that popped in my hand. She was hot. Anyway. So, all right. I see people understanding what I'm talking about. Here's what I want you to do for yourself. And anybody who understands this also put in just, if you understand what I'm about to say, I want you to write purpose in the chat. If you treat your moving towards your purpose with the same level of work ethic you do right before you going on vacation, that first week that you get a job and you want to let them know that you the one, if you treat Driving towards your purpose with that same amount of, uh, write that in the chat, write purpose in the chat. Because here's what people's problem is. People will find their purpose, find their goal, find their direction, find what they want in life, right? And then they forget that I'm about to go on vacation feeling. Imagine if you worked at your purpose with the same amount of cock diesel as you do right before you go on vacation? What if you put in that same level of fire, that same level of energy every time? You sit down to craft something, right? All right, I appreciate that. I appreciate that. Paul, I know, Paul, you have been on a mission in the last couple of months, and I got to give you mad respect for that. Paul has found his groove. Like, Paul's nickname is Stella. Not just because them heels he rock every once in a while, Paul's new nickname is Stella. Stella has definitely found that groove, and I got to appreciate that. Uh, same with Keely. Keely and I have conversations about this recently. Keely has found her groove, right? Now, here's what's going to happen. You might not be popping the dollars that you want to pop right now. Trust, you have to trust that. Some of you guys will profess your faith in this black book with some gold writing on it and gold edges, but you won't profess your faith in your own purpose, now, y'all know I'm a heathen. Y'all know I am a hardcore uh, anti disestablishment slash atheist slash agnostic slash as whatever you want to call it. That fool ain't a believer. I don't care. You Hey, sometimes the devil bring you messages, okay? So I don't care. If you mad at me because I don't do that, hey, that's you. I don't do that. I just don't, right? Be, and I, my reasons is not necessary. But if you put the same level of faith you put in that book, into your purpose, okay, I'll throw this right back at you. If you believe everything that's in that book and you believe that man put you here, believe he gave you the power to do your purpose and you not doing your purpose the way he gave it to you, that's the devil. Take that. Take that from a non-preacher, okay? So all y'all out here slipping, uh, hey, <laughs> time to go to your book and talk to that book. Go to church tomorrow and be like, uh, uh, Pastor, I need y'all to pray on me refining my purpose because my friend Doc said I'm an a-hole. <laughs> I'm joking. You're not an a-hole. It's just it's easy to get it's easy to get sidetracked, fam. Life will do that, right? Life will sidetrack you. Katie had us watching Jurassic Park this week, and one of the big takeaways for me that I completely forgot about this line is "Welcome to Jurassic Park." No, no, that <laughs> is life finds a way. Life finds a way, and it's all about how you look at it. Some people look at it as life finds a way to be distracted. I'm going to look at it as life is giving me signals and guideposts to make sure I maintain on purpose. So when some distraction comes, and hit me, I had one recently, when one comes up to you, some people look at it like, oh, my God, distraction, I'm being taken away. This is pain. I look at it like, not today, Carol. Get about my face. But now I got time for that week. We're not time for that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you know? 
I just look at those distractions and be like, no. All right. Uh, the other day, my, my boys and I had an opportunity for the first time in a minute to go out and break bread together and catch drinks. And the funniest part <laughs> was it was like 830. There's five of us at the table. It was my homie's birthday. Right. We was busting up a 60 ounce tomahawk. Oh, my goodness, fam. Duck fat fries and garlic noodles. Y'all know about that. That's an Asian thing. Anyway, we was there, and we were done getting close to it. You know, they bring out the little cream belay for the dessert for my homie, whatever. And they was like, where are we going after this? Where are we going? After? And so that, con that, that conversation came like six, seven times. I looked at my boy Kaleo, and I said, Kaleo, now these fools know every single body at this table is old. And we over here all, you know, like we in our 30s, whatever, talking about where we going after this. I got a dime against two fat boys. We going home by nine. <laughs> and then, you know what? We finna be happy about it. And so we and Kaleo was laughing. Check comes. They, my boy Day picked up the check. Thanks, Day. <laughs> uh, we go outside. We stand outside. Normally the outside, everybody knows this. The outside is about 15 minutes of where we going after this. Our outside was, where we going? I don't know about you, dog. I'm going home. And it was a collective sigh of relief because everybody said, yeah, we go home. We all got in our respective whips and we went home, right? That is what happens when you understand your purpose. That joke is intended to make us feel like we're old. Nah, it's just that I had, to, I had to get up the next day. I had something I needed to do, right? And so did everybody else. The old us not in our purpose mode, we would have went out and towed these streets up. But now... Man's got two kids. My other man's got a, a, a new business. My other man's is fitting to change jobs, so he's finishing up what he's fitting to do. You know, my other man's, he, he works at the airlines. Like, his job is making sure them planes fly straight, you know? And, like, we all looked at each other straight face and be like, bet, go home, peace out, you know? So that's, it's easy to blame that on we old. Nah, it's because as you get older, it's easier to understand your purpose and you understand that you're not fitting to do that life, right? So let me lock, I'm going to lock that question in place and, uh, you know, <laughs> just keep it on. Now, the, 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 the key element here is at times make sure that you are taking this time to reflect on what's going on in your life, right? And your job, you do a performance review. This mid-year reset for me is kind of like that performance review, Right. Um, whenever you stop and take note of what y'all doing, that is you reflecting on what's going on. I like to look back at what happened over the last six months and come with some kind of SCO. I'm going to give myself a C. I feel like I have more stuff that I wanted to done that I didn't get a chance to do. But I ain't mad at me. I'm not throwing myself in time. My mom would have punished me for getting anything less than an A. But you know what? She ain't in charge of this no more. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, it is time to go do these things. All right? You know, uh, Sandy, here, let me, let me cover this real quick. Uh, most people do not understand the definition of distraction. Traction is whenever you put purpose in front, right? And you're moving towards that purpose. Every bit of notice the word inside there, action. Every time you put action in place that moves you towards your goal is moving you towards your goal. That is traction. When your goal is to go to the end of the block, you press on the gas pedal. The gas pedal sends gas into the electronic fuel injectors, no more carburetors, and that creates a spark. That explosion pushes the piston down. That turns the camshaft. That camshaft turns the flywheel. That in turn turns the transmission, and it causes the wheels to rotate forward. When you have traction, the car will take off. When you don't have traction, snow, mud, rocks, uh, oil slicks, water, your car would and or skirt skirt, right? And you ain't gone nowhere. That is distraction. Traction moves you forward. Distraction is the opposite of traction. So when your car is and just bouncing in place, that is distraction. We call it a burnout, but it's distraction. 
So the word distraction doesn't mean, I mean, it does, but it's because it is that impediment that has taken you away from your action. Traction is moving forward on your action. Distraction is getting stuck in that position. Ain't going nowhere. Retraction is when you go backwards. See, people got the dictionary, and they use these words. They don't know what the, they mean. I'm trying to put you on, all right? Traction, move forward. Distraction, stand still. Retraction, backwards. English, ain't that hard. You know what I'm saying? People be using these words. They don't really know what they mean. So trust you me, distractions are all a part of life, but you know when you got one because your car, your car, your car, your action of your purpose to get where you fit in to be, it got you stuck distracted gangster put that in your dictionary and smoke that drink <laughs> uh there you go liz liz says she went through her her uh uh reconnecting to her vision this is super important it was 150 dollar tomahawk though <laughs> how you know <laughs> did i tell you that it was 150 tomahawk but good lord it was good <laughs> it is so good um there you go. Perfection should be a journey, not a destination. Perfection will look different to you every day. 100% Tommy. Absolutely agreed. Uh, Michelle, I have so much things to talk to you about. <laughs> um, right. And, and it's funny, Tatiana, because, hey, check this out. You're a teacher. Have you ever taught it that way? Now, I know you're educators, so you've probably learned it. That's exactly what it means, but people don't use it in that because we have learned to lazy define words. We have learned to speak lazy. Uh, Miss D used to have a terminology about being lazy in diction. And I think not only are we lazy in diction, we are as a community lazy in comprehension. So we use words without even knowing what they mean. We use words because we have a general understanding of them. And I don't think that's powerful. I don't think that's helpful. I think we should always know what the the proper terminology is because it it helps you you know sort of get somewhere all right and this is perspective right because i'm going to see it as action because i'm moving towards something i'm trying to drag people into the circle while i'm over there anyway so um let's let's get there and let's go into the next thing so now that we've done our reflection uh i like to check in on myself every six months or so do a little you know sort of grading score I think it's important to revisit your goals. Tati just mentioned this, uh, and and uh, so did Liz, about revisiting your goals and sort of understanding. I think it's important. What you do is you reaffirm your purpose. You'd be like, okay, I still got this. Or, hey, let's be honest. This ain't fitting to work. I've thrown some stuff at this, but this is not fitting to work. Let me back up, reassess, and try something else. You know what I mean? I think this is how the best discoveries in the world are made. Everybody is climbing the tree to get mangoes, right? Some dudes said, what if I put a Catherine Hepburn coat hanger loop on the end of a broomstick, duct tape it, and it's just a little circle on the end of a broomstick? And what if I hook it around the mango, get it right on the little string part, and then pop it down and then catch it, right? Sometimes backing up, reassessing the situation and coming up with a different game plan now has what is known as a mango hook. Everybody in Hawaii that has a mango tree has a mango hook. Some people got smart and they use a retractable fiberglass pole. Some people use a bamboo stick. Some people use a broomstick. Some people use a broken whatever because they stopped beating their kids. But there's a, a coat hook. And some people make the loop version. It looks like that, just big enough to slip over the mango. And then it's duct tape on the end. You hook it, you boom, catch the mango. Then some people are like, well, that bruises mangoes. What if we put a fishing net on the end instead, a small fishing net, and then duct tape it? Now when you hook it and pull it, you don't got to catch the mango. It just get caught in the net. And I could catch five, six of them, then bring it down and empty it and do it again. Some people are like, I can't get the hook around my mangoes. They too fat. So they just build a hook like a higher light. You guys know the higher light thing? Their hook looked just like this. And it has a little basket. And they just, So, but anyway, people figured it out. 
people have reassessed it. So this is your chance to go back, revisit your goals, see what's missing, see where you are getting distraction and realign them. I'm giving you permission to start again. If the see every reason why I do this every year, people, in case you're wondering, July 2nd is the midway point for this particular year. It's normally between July 2nd or July 3rd. That's the the midpoint of the year. So this is a perfect chance to do it. So this is why I do it, right? Anyway, just wanted to make sure you guys already know. <laughs> Miss T said, already added it to my lessons. Man, I have, you know what? I know I removed that thing, but it's really weird. It still, it still pops through. And that means that uh, Sammy uh, threw a super chat. Thank you, Sammy. <laughs> it's so crazy how that noise comes up, even though I have deleted that widget box. I really have to figure this out. Um, anyway, so uh, thank you for that, Sammy. I appreciate you, my brother. Uh, every little bit counts. I'm getting my Apple Vision Pro. I'm just stacking <laughs> I'm stacking every little bit counts. Okay, so now another important part after you've done that is assessing your progress, right? Let's give ourselves a reality check. Let's see where we are. Now, here's the thing. I want to make sure that we are crystal. Your version of success is different from mine, okay? My success isn't 100,000 followers. My success isn't you know, $50, $11 million. My, no, my success is not connected to any vanity metrics. My success comes in when a conversation comes up from a large company about we need to find a place to build a community. And the first thought that comes to any of your guys' mind is let me put them on with Keely. I can sit back and I didn't do her work. She did her own work. I got nothing to do with that. But I was definitely yelling and screaming and kicking and pushing and hoping and praying and conversating and learning together and supporting. And so I can stand back and every time she gets another contract, I can be proud because as a friend, I've watched her grow into what she has found, which was a complete accident from doing the, the, the field hockey stuff, which she still does, right? Somebody who did not listen to the fact that you only got to do one. She's like, I know you guys. I heard you. I don't give a damn. I'm Keely. I'm sassy. I'm doing two. And she's doing two. And that's fine. If, if it works, I'm saying, please don't take anything I say for gold. What these are, are seasonings. These seasonings, you season your stuff with it. Some people, this little, I seen some of y'all come through with the little hot sauce, right? And you be like this, drip, drip, drip. And other y'all be like, and <laughs> let me not pour this on the mic, and just hot sauce the whole thing. That's what this is. This show is hot sauce. I want you to uh, apply the hot sauce sparingly if that's what you need or drench that. Hey, this is me and hot sauce. Me and Michelle, because she's Trini. <laughs> me and Michelle would just drink the hot sauce and then eat the chicken. Okay? So, hey, whatever works for you, I appreciate that. So every time... You know, I get an opportunity to send her another referral or I hear from someone in the community that they sent her a referral. Th those are my Tinkerbell tears right there or laughs. I forgot. <laughs> uh, those are that's what I that's me. Like, that's part of my purpose. I know that if someone that I work with or I've had the ability to coach then now impacts the lives of let's see, this community is probably going to be like 100,000 deep. I can add that 100,000 to my number. I can add that 100,000 to my billion. The minute that she makes a server for a company with 50 million users, I get to add them 50 million to my billion because that's that's a that's a trickleated effect. You know what I mean? That's part of the family tree. <laughs> so, you know, boom. I appreciate that. You know what I mean? I really, really, really appreciate that. So let's make sure we are accessing our progress, seeing where we're going, giving ourselves a, a measurement guide for our success that's ours. 
like what Sammy wants for your success is not what you want for your success. You don't have to you don't have to accept that. This is up to you, right? You have to take this for yourself. One of our friends, I I'm constantly telling this person and hopefully they watch the replay to make sure that they keep the message in their head. When someone says something and you feel that you're not doing it, you don't have to justify I think it's better that you accept you're not doing it, say you want to do something about it, than to give the justification as to why you're not doing it. I think the justification is the distraction. I think the justification, figuring out a good excuse as to why you're not doing what everyone else wants you to do or you think you should be doing or what you told yourself you was going to do, justifying why it didn't happen is actually slowing you down. Because the, the mental brain cells, it took you to create that justification could have been used to create something positive. But what you're doing is creating something dispositive to what you're doing. Mrs. D has a famous line. I steal it on a regular basis. I will give her her flowers now. Some of y'all who say you're not very creative are really good at creating excuses. I love that. I love that so, so much. So if... You're not doing what you say you're doing and somebody calls you on it. Just be like, yes, yes, chef. Right. I think there is a lot. <laughs> I think there is a lot to uh, obtain from the movie bear or TV show bear. If you have a chance, I think there's a lot to learn from it because in a restaurant situation, and I've, I've worked in a restaurant. I've worked front of house, back of house, and kitchen in a restaurant. Um, this is definitely true. You don't have time to stop, get caught in your feelings or whatever, because it will F dinners for everybody out there that's coming to eat. So one of the things that that is definitely true is everything is, yes, chef, no chef, please, and thank you. I think that is a good way to adapt this, especially while we're learning together. Somebody's going to say something that that might just hurt you in a certain way or, or, or tickle a little spot for you. At, at this point in time, if it doesn't serve you, it's just, yes, chef. And and you can go back and ignore it later. You can figure it out. Don't get caught in the, this is talking about me. No, no, this is for everybody. So, it's not now you might fit one of them descriptions. That's a conversation between you and you. But let's take it back to the army. We have yes, sir, no, sir, no excuse, sir. We have three answers available. All my military folks in here, they know we have three answers available whenever you are being posed the question. Yes, sir, no, sir, or whatever the rank is, right? Uh I normally you're getting yelled at by officers, right? So yes, sir, no, sir, no excuse, sir. That's all we got. We have no other answers, right? If you help yourself, I'm not asking you to be military. You might even be anti-war. That's not important. Please do not get lost in the sentence. The answers to yourself are yes, Tatiana, no, Tatiana, no excuse, Tatiana. That's it. If you do that for you, I see nothing but pathways i just pulled your name tati because you're right here on the screen okay i wasn't like calling you out calling y'all look your name just happens to be right there just so you know all right <laughs> see i don't want her coming out to me because she looked like she could fight anyway so yes i've been there trying and trying to try and but stuck something wasn't working i've got some clarity and a new game plan <laughs> i am about that when you find that new game plan it is Oh my God. It's like, it's like Atlas was like, Hey, let me get that for you. <laughs> That's what it feels like when you find that game plan. Come on, come on. Yes, right. You got to lean into it, bro. You got to lean into it. Okay. Now, how about now that we've reassessed ourselves, now that we've checked our strategy, now that we accessed our progress, how about we re-strategize with the purpose in mind. Okay. Again, I'm going to stop harping on this. I'm gonna, I swear. I'm going to stop harping on this. Another thing I picked up recently in watching bear and it's so powerful, but it's so simple. 
is so simple. Let me do this right here. I'm going to put this out right here. This also comes from that stupid show. And I just want to put this on screen because, man, I have been feeling this lately. I have been feeling this lately. This comes directly from that show. And, yeah, it's a, it's a reminder, bro. Every second counts. So... As I'm re-strategizing with my purpose in mind, as I'm re-strategizing with my purpose of making sure that I positively impact the lives of a billion people, I have to remind myself that every second counts. It's crazy. I, I just recently lost a family member in the last couple of weeks, and... It's trippy because I saw the episode of the show where this comes up, like right after, while I was still processing the loss of someone who taught me a lot. And it's a reminder, every second counts, because he kind of sort of not old enough to be gone yet. You know what I mean? Uh, not, well, actually, what is old enough? <laughs> Let's be honest, right? Um, but... If you can re-strategize with your purpose in mind and remind yourself that every second counts and work like it's your first week on a job or you're about to go on vacation, I feel like you should start to get some of that traction. I think it's almost impossible. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to save what Tommy just said because I think it is a very important is a very important conversation. Uh, you know what I'm saying? So, yes, as the year reaches a midpoint, take a moment to reset, refuel, and reignite your ambitions, right? Uh, very important. Very important. Uh, sorry, Kios. Didn't mean to say that. Uh, <laughs> you know she is. I don't know why you guys is clouding out here. You know she is. <laughs> I'm going to make a t-shirt now for the merch shop. This show is hot sauce. <laughs> Let me, I, I've got too much things popping on the screen right now. Let me move this over here. Um, but yeah, this is definitely one of the things that I picked up from watching that show. And it is, oh my God, it's been just crazy. So let's re-strategize with our purpose in mind. Now that Tati has found her new purpose, now we can re-strategize what she's doing to get there. Now we can come up with new action plans that's going to get there. Here's the thing that's crazy. I envy, right? I envy my educators. I envy Tom. I envy Tati. I remember, envy our educators. Why? They know how to write a lesson plan. And for those who know how to write a lesson plan, they'll be really good at writing the action plan to make sure you get these outcomes. Because what teachers do is here's an objective, right? Here are the action steps we're going to take to reach this objective. And at the end of that objective, they compare subjectively what you did how does what you've done subjectively match the learning outcomes or learning objectives and then give you an A, right? This is her life. This means that apply that to what we're doing right here, game changer. You know what I'm saying? This basically what I'm talking about. This is that meeting you have at the right before summer break with your parents, <laughs> with the teacher, we are PTA and this is it. So I envy someone like Tati because she already has the skills to do this. This is part of if she learned it in college of ed, she has the skills to do this already, right? And I suggest if you if you want, reach out to a sister and be like, hey, what does that look like again? Because she had everything I'm talking about is actually part of her daily do her thing with her students, right? All right, boom. Now, I want to make sure that we are setting realistic expectations on ourselves. This goes a little bit into what Tommy said, um, but here's what happens. Someone says, oh, here's a video on how to get to, man, let me, uh, I'm going to pull this one back because this one actually 
it got some feelings to it. <laughs> All right, I don't do feelings, but I know it got some feelings to it because Eileen and I discussed this last week in the after party. And um, d- big shouts out to Cud and Eileen over here. Somebody right now is making a video that's sitting on the old YouTube that says, get to your first thousand followers easily. Get to your first thousand followers in 30 days. Follow these steps and and then you follow the steps and you don't do it and it got you feeling some type of way. Let's be dead honest, okay? There are people that can do that basically solely on the fact that they have the attractive privilege, right? There are going to people that have that solely based on the fact that the mass demographic of YouTube fits into a certain mold and they match that mold. And so people are willing to follow them. So that might not be your story, right? People say, oh, just go into the store, go into the back, right? Find your little item that you want to need and then get it and get the hell out. Then there's so some of us that have body type that requires us to try everything on. We cannot just buy something OTR. We have to buy it, try it on. I mean, before we buy, you got to try it on. You got to try different sizes. You're stuck in between. You can't really get this. You can't really get that. You you know, when I was a little kid, man, you know, granimals, get this animal, match it with this animal, and it's good. Did it work for me? Why? Because I was a track lead. So skinny kid with big thighs, no pants fit. Right, and, and a Puerto Rican ass. No pants fit. I always had to buy Huskies, even though I wasn't big enough to wear Huskies. And then grandma had to dart the edges in. Right? Because I was born with big thighs and a Puerto Rican ass. And I was a sprinter. <laughs> so now I can fit Huskies. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, yeah, that stuff doesn't work. Right? It, 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 don't be disheartened by the fact that the pretty recipe doesn't match you. It's okay. Right. Many of us are making flourless cakes because we can't have a certain type of flour. Many of us are making uh, cakes with, you know, dairy substitute milk or whatever, because we can't have no milk. Don't be disheartened by the fact that pretty boy swag don't work. You it works for Jimmy Hicks. It don't work for us that don't be disheartened by that. And, and 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 this somewhat goes to what Tommy says because the reason the people who focus on the vanity metrics have the privilege of being able to do that nine times out of ten, right, right. The little cute yoga pants wearing influencer or whatever, um, uh, uh, Kali used to call all the time Sarah Beth. I don't know the rest of her name. I just call her Sarah Beth. Sarah Beth can get three million followers talking about some, you know yoga and get a deal from lululemon because you know hey i was growing up i was never fitting to be uh what that boy name is what that boy name is used to be with polo um i was never going to be him uh man i don't forgot his name begins with a t uh the first like big 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 uh brother model used to rock for polo back in the day um oh my god it'll come to me anyway i was never going to be him I ain't really care. You know what I'm saying? I was going to say Tyrese Gibson because they look similar, but that's not his name. (laughs) Uh, Anyway, you guys know what I mean. So, yeah, there's definitely people that have the beauty privilege. There's people that have the limited, uh, unlimited resources privilege. They will be able to hit some of those weird vanity metrics. But if that's if your purpose is based off those vanity metrics, you will probably suffer. You will probably fail. I'm just saying it is really, really hard to wrap. Man, I started talking about flourless stuff and vegan stuff, and this lady pops up. How you doing, cat? <laughs> yeah, you will probably fail, right? Um, so, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. I know what you meant, Tati. I got it right there. There you go. What's up, June Kangy Langs? Little brother in the building. Um, yes, Tati says she's more than happy to connect with folks <laughs> in the building. Uh, in subordinate nation, the quickest way to get a ticket to KP duty, right? Uh, I hate the kind of video to make uh, 4,000 into 100%. 
yo, these are super crazy, right? These are super, super crazy. Hello, Miss Wheezy. I appreciate you. Thank you for being here today. Uh, yeah, it is definitely one of those things where now all these people are like, this is easy, that is easy. It's, sorry, it's not necessarily the case. And going back to where JP said, I'd rather work for it to get there. Like, it's a whole different feeling, right? <laughs> We're going to teach you how to be an overnight success right after 9,999 9, nights of hard work and laser focus. I'm on day 31 of laser focus. There you go. Uh, I have to try it. I have to try on everything too, right? Same thing. You always got to make your own food. So it is what it is. The one size fits all thing never really works, right? It's so, so crazy, but it doesn't work. So you definitely have to do this. Kathy says, it's so easy to decide that one size fits all and spin your wheels figuring out why instead of you just trying on a better fit for you. 100%. Yes, Tyson. That's his name. Tyson whatever. I can't remember. Um, no, no, it's Tyson. Um, I forget. He used to be on Polo. Um, Y'all gonna make me look things up because everything is Googleable, right? This dude right here, Beckford. This dude right here, Tyson Beckford, right? Like, thank you. Luis is late, but he's in there. Man, see how quick that worked? Yeah, that, like, you, you, I mean, hey, you knew you wasn't fitting to be Tyson Beckford, so you had to go and get a fit that matched you. Right. And as a community, we were all stoked that big fashion finally picked a black male model and let him be the face of the brand. Prior to Tyson, nobody had done that, you know, so he, he broke bread. He broke bread. Was he British, Miss Weezy? Shut up. I didn't know that because we never heard him speak. All we seen him smolder. <laughs> you know, I didn't know he was British. All right, so there you go. Um, which explains a lot. Because America, we talk a lot, of sh but we way behind. Brit Britain is a little bit further ahead of the game than than us. Boom. I thought that boy was American. Me not know. Anyway. Anyway, so we talked about setting some uh, realistic expectations for ourselves. Now, let's talk about something that I don't. I don't like this term, okay? But just because I don't like this term doesn't mean it can't work for you. I don't like the term motivation, okay? And I'm, I'm, I've got to get motivated to do this. I, I, yo, either you want to do it or you don't. I think motivation is binary. I don't really like the term motive. I think motivation is BS. I'm going to agree with Mel on this one. Mel Robbins, C2, agrees that motivation is BS. We do what we want to do when we want to do it. I don't think motivation is a thing. This is just me. Again, take my hot sauce, and if you are a one drop of hot sauce, knock yourself out. I'm a Puerto Rican kid raised by Koreans, and we do hot sauce, <laughs> okay? I'm going with the hot sauce, right? I do, I think motivation is complete. June, the reason why you think that is because you're my little brother and we have the same dad. <laughs> so, yeah, I don't think I think motivation is absolute BS. All right. But, hey, if it works for you, please do you. OK, I think that when you have your purpose lined up for you, when you know what it is you want to do it's unstoppable. Have you ever. Been in love. If you've ever been in love, if you've ever saw this person and said to yourself, I'm finna get that. You ain't slept. The reason why you ain't slept is because you ain't in love is because your motivation is I got to think all the way through to make sure I say the right things and do the right things and do the right gifts and cook the right food and go to right places and hold hands at the right time. Remember these favorite colors. Remember this. Remember that. Because that's why you ain't slept. Fools, see, y'all be over romanticizing some BS. I ain't slept because I'm in love. No, you ain't slept because your brain was thinking how to make sure that you do not f this up. That's why you ain't slept. That's love. <laughs> okay. It's not see, let's get let's get into the science and stop talking BS. Stop working on feelings. Sorry, Tots. <laughs> 
it ain't the feeling. It's easy to explain the simplicity of the feeling of I'm in love, so I can't eat, I can't sleep, or whatever. No, your brain is hard charged with the hashtag motivation to make sure that you don't F up this relationship. You want to be able to years later, be on the call with your friend doc and see them sexy legs walk into the kitchen to make pasta. Keely. <laughs> Mr. Corey, every time he walked back there, I'm like, Hey Corey, nice legs. <laughs> you know? So like to make sure that you're in that position many, many years on, in the beginning, you didn't sleep. You didn't eat. You weren't distracted by the next nice pair of legs that came through. You were on purpose to make sure that you landed that individual that you still with, right? I don't know if Miss Eileen could go all the way back to 1975 when she first laid eyes on Mr. Rodney. I'm just pulling numbers out of my butt, but Ali will fix them for me, right? When she first laid eyes on Mr. Rodney and was like, hey, man, come over here and pull out my chair. <laughs> and then Mr. Rodney pulled the chair. Miss Ali sat down and said, why, thank you, with her southern, you know, thing, right? The first time that cat made dinner for Cheryl, and sat there with the look on her face like, she mine. As she's, once, soon as she tastes these beans, she's mine, right? That's motivation, right? Because it was a purpose. You had a purpose. You knew where you were going. You knew what you wanted. You knew what you was finna do, and you worked at that. Again, some of y'all purpose is making excuses. <laughs> uh uh, and thank you, man. I'm sorry. I really, really don't really do the per I don't do the the lazy things. Uh, <laughs> I had that feeling, but it had nothing to do with it. Miss Eileen, this is a, uh, a family show. Keep it to yourself. Uh, anyway, I just want to say that make sure that when you know your purpose, you will do the right things, right? Um, Miss <laughs> Weezy said many people don't exercise because they're waiting for motivation versus just scheduling. This is what I agree upon. I agree upon scheduling. This is something that I did honestly pick up from Keely uh, about blocking certain time for certain things and making those block times unnegotiable. That's really helpful. Uh, growing up labeled as Husky, I can tell you the biggest lion advertised 100 percent. Man, I think Tommy is behind us. <laughs> <laughs> but the point is still the point. It's a very good point. Um, yes. Why chase motivation when you can saddle up determination and ride off into the sunset? <laughs> Thank you, Tots. Is it because I said your name seven times? I might be eight. I'm just joking. <laughs> look, look. Cheryl is laughing so hard, but it's true. Okay? See, I know, Cat. I know, because I used to use cooking as my hook, too. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of things I don't do, be, not because of motivation. It's because I'm tired. Shut up, June. Man, my brother is in here disrupting class. Uh, listen, uh, yeah, it's it's a thing, fam. It is really a thing that once you have your purpose figured out, the the motivation is automatic, bro. Like I don't feel good if I didn't do something to get towards my goal of days. Those days where I have a lazy day, where I'm basically in the house. Okay, in Hawaii, it's air conditioning on full blast under the blanket. <laughs> when I'm in the house under the blanket, big old uh, jug of water with the lines on it, and I'm there. I don't feel good if I don't add something to the party. So what I'll do, I'll absorb. Uh, a, a, a lesson on something I'm trying to learn. I will sit there and play with mid journey for like an hour, but I'll make sure that I'm doing something that's getting me to where I got to get. Like I might take the whole day to do Jack, but I'm going to take at least a uh, half an hour to learn something new. Cause I can't sleep. If I don't learn something new every day, this is just me. This is legit. Just me. There you go. Uh, be your best until you fail. It's not failure. If you did your best hundred percent. Okay, now let's talk about purpose planning for success. This is me. I want you to find you, okay? Uh, Tati says she'd be willing to come and talk to us about how she plans things out. I think if we went back, okay, say you're not good at planning. Let's say you absolutely suck balls at planning, right? Let's go back and do it the way it was in school. 
Here's the objective. Bam. These are the subjective things that we have to learn to test against the objective. Then do those subject do those subjective things and test against the out objective outcomes. Man, I'm gonna say this in the right manner. I have no idea what the words are, but I know what I'm speaking on because we all went to damn school. Okay. The first day the teacher gave you from kindergarten, we didn't know it was a syllabus back then, but we got a syllabi. And in the syllabi, it said, uh, let's pick a class. We're going to learn, uh, let's do cooking, right? We're going to learn how to bake, okay? In how to bake, you're going to need to know how to do measurement conversions. That is an outcome that's over here. You're going to learn how to, you're going to understand the relation between science and baking. Bam. You're going to learn how to properly uh, leaven. I, I don't even know what that word means, but I know what that word means. You know what I'm saying? But, hey, we're going to learn how to leaven, and then we're going to learn substitute leavening agents, and then we're going to learn substitute ingredients. We're going to learn adjusting for altitude, and then we're going to learn uh, pricing cost of goods because we're opening the bakery, right? Now we're going to do those things. We're going to get in and just figure out what leavening agents are, emotion agents are. We're going to learn how to do these calculations in our head. Take this number, add two by two, divide by three, carry to one. And at the end, we're going to be able to test against those objective outcomes. And then we're going to make a carrot cake or as Baba calls it, a carrots cake <laughs> because there's more than one carrot, right? Uh, so, uh, Luis just texted me, you stupid. You could have put that in the chat. Luis just texted me. Doc and I went to very different kindergartens somewhere in my head. I switched from kindergarten to home ec class. I, I jumped from to seventh grade, like, like that. Anyway. Um, yeah, it's the same process. So if we, if you have a problem learning how to plan for success, let's do that. Let's take it back and let's put it the way we learned it in school, right? Maybe, you know, uh, when I come back from vacation, Tati, we'll pull up on a Saturday and we'll talk about it, right? Because I think you probably got a better handle on this because you have to do this not only for yourself, you got to do this for X amount of students every year. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yes, thank you. Thank you, Tots. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, agree. When you know your goal and focus, it's easy to stay on track. 100%. That's the reason why back in the Little Rascals, they used to put the carrot in front of the goat or and then or the mule or whatever that thing was, one of them horse things, and then they had the thing in the back, and that's how they was able to move because the, the aminal knew how to b try to bite the carrot. So it was constantly trying to grab the carrot, and that caused it to move. Right. So it's just like little rascals. Right. Anybody that remembers little rascal, you old as dirt. I'm just going to say, um, yes, 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 yes. Tommy. Yes. I'm almost ready to take your two points. Come here. I want to cover both of those. That is fantastic. My brother, uh, doc says living in at the same moment, <laughs> wife has him some side. Hey, come on, listen, JP. You can't talk about no country woman sourdough biscuits on my stream if I can't get one. That is freaking evil. Yes. <laughs> Don't press that. Okay, press all the buttons. <laughs> uh, Catholic kindergarten students is advanced. You know what I mean? <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Shut up, Jude. <laughs> Yes, it was it was little rascals, bro, for sure. Um, ooh, Arby, add this to Tommy's point. All right, let's cool. So now let's talk about the last thing. Fam, everybody knows what I'm about to say. Everybody in this chat that is part of the drop squad knows exactly what I'm about to say. If you are not a card carrier member of the Drop Squad, you still know what I'm about to say. Cause look, your man has said this a couple few hundred times. Look up there, look right there, just in case. Get in where you fit in. Listen, consistency. Consistency. If you consistently don't make what you're supposed to be making, 
you will consistently not grow. It is impossible to grow. There are very, do not, very few weed channels. I don't mean this kind of weed channels. I mean where the bird flew and dropped the seed somewhere and it just grew. Or walking in the other grass, the other, other grass, caused the seed to fly, land somewhere, and it just grows by itself unattended. There are very few weed success levels in what we do, right? There is consistency, right? There is consistency. <laughs> uh, say, <laughs> I'm here for my resetting. Got my FFP ready. Step one, loop of performance. Let's go. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? All right. How I got scrolled all the way back to the beginning, I don't know. But uh, I just thought that was a good point. So, yes, it is very important that you find a way to be consistent. If you are struggling with consistency, let's confess right now. Everybody that struggles with their consistency, let's confess right now. Put it in the chat. I struggle with consistency or just struggle bus or hand emoji, whatever pops your socks. If you are struggling with consistency, let's go. But it is, very, I don't know what it is, but you got to find it, right? I think that knowing your purpose, knowing where you're going, knowing what you want the outcome to look like can definitely improve your strategy when it comes to consistency. One of the things that might be helping you struggle with your consistency is you don't know exactly where you're going. Okay, if you could, I see Miss Weeds because she knew around these parts. Uh, man, Gretchen, you do not struggle with consistency. I'm going to take that back from you. But anyway, Miss Weezy, tell me something real quick in the chat. Uh, you and uh, Silverhead Fitness, both of you guys tell me, if can, do you already know what your purpose is? Yes. And if you do have it, tell us what your purpose is. I'm curious. Now, Gretchen, you do not get to claim this because you streamed every single day for 370 days, it was whatever. It was past the year. It was, it was well past the year. You did a year solid of streaming every night. You know how to do consistency. And now, hold up, Gretchen Louise Shepard. When, I don't know if Louise is not her middle name. I like to make up people's middle names, okay? Just letting you know. <laughs> when you stopped, we had a meeting. And I said, listen, sis, enjoy the win. The win was massive. I said, but the most important thing is do not take off too long because you're going to forget what it felt like to go live every day and you will have a hard time getting back. I specifically said, when we run track, where my track people at, when you finish the mile, you do not sit down. You do not stop. You do not lay down. Lay, 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 lay. You do not lay down. When you finish the mile, you walk another 800 slowly because if you just stop, it hurt like a stomach, right? It's very important that when you hit that goal, when I finished that 100 yard high hurdles, I bust through the tape and I walked all the way around. I don't care first, second, third. I never was last. I normally first, second, and third. But if I came in fifth, if I run through the tape, I kept running around the curve, and then I walked my way back to the start line again. Nate, never just stop. Because if you do, you clinch up tighter than I can't even say on this here stream. So I know you ain't struggling, Gretchen, because I know you know how to do this. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> uh, consistency is essential. Yes, it is. There, oh, thank you. That's a big difference, too. All right. I'm, I'm about to dive into Tommy's questions real quick. I just want to make sure that. We got it. Um, graphic designer, I've been working in real estate. It's not for me. I hate to admit it. Hey, that is, hey, this is a level of clarity we're talking about. <laughs> this is a level of clarity we're talking about. I was a licensed realtor for like two years. And I was like, I can't do this. 
it's not me. I just couldn't do it. Uh, not that lacking skill or, or ability. I didn't lack, I lacked the patience to put up with the stupidity and the arrogance of the people that I was forced to work with. And they were like psychological vampires to me. <laughs> um, yeah, just no way in heck I can do that. All right, so let's go. Says, I'm not sure. The only thing I know is that I inspire wellness through exercise, but find it challenging to engage with the audience conversationally. All right, we're going to talk about that. All right, so let me just run this back real quick for anybody watching. We're talking about finding our purpose. We're talking about reflecting. Make sure you journal, uh, video journal, whatever. Find a way to, to do your reflection. Revision your goals. Access your product. Access your progress. Um, be flexible. Be willing to adapt to change. I think I might have skipped that one, but you guys know my thing. Be Gumby, damn it. Be willing to adapt and change. Re-strategize with your purpose in mind. Um, set realistic expectation. Maintain your motivation through your purpose. Let your purpose be your drive. Be powered by purpose. You know what I'm saying? And use your purpose to help you plan for the success, and then let's get consistent. All right, so... <laughs> There you go. I think I struggle with my own perspective of my focus and progress. Oh, let's lock this one down. All right, let me get over to what Tommy was saying. And I'm going to start with Tommy was saying by, I've been holding this all day. I, I, I actually tweeted this out on threads yesterday. I tweeted this out. I threaded this out yesterday. I spooled it out. Yeah, what the hell is the proper terminology? All right. This is one of those moments where I tell you to get a pencil and write this down. I know some of y'all don't listen when I say write this down, but trust you me, write this down. This is very important. This is something that I have arguments with folks about on a daily basis because we have been trained by our parents, by the system, by the media, by people around us, and we refuse to get retrained. I'm trying to retrain you on this one, but hold this as gospel. I said earlier, don't listen to everything I say. <laughs> Hot sauce this baby. Drop if you need it. Court if you need it. This one might be canon. Not that kind of canon. Just canon, as in, you know, Catholic learnings. Here we go. The problem is rarely the problem. I, I just, man, I got to let that marinate and I got to say it three times because they say you say it three times, they'll get it. The problem is rarely the problem. I'm going to say it one more time for the people in the back. The problem is rarely the problem. Once you clock that into your nugget, also remember the problem is your relationship to the problem. Why I said what Gretchen said was important, because it's not that she's struggling. She's struggling with her own perception of her focus and progress. She just validated what I just said. The problem is really the problem. In this example, the problem is inconsistency. The problem is her own perception of her focus and her progress. That is the problem. Here's the dope part about being photographers. We know how to refocus. Let's refocus. Let's get it. Let's get it, gangsta grandma. Let's just refocus. Okay? So let me go all the way back to the top of what Tommy said, because I think this is important. Break down the perception that views, clicks, and subs define success in the creative universe. Here's my breakdown 
Thomas Emmanuel Ellison. I don't, again, I make up middle names. I know good and well his middle name is not Emmanuel, but it just sounded good. <laughs> uh, it's not my perception. This is how I break it down. I knew from day one. See, this is funny. And I'm going to say this, and I, 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 I can't have a better definition than my definition because this is my truth, and your truth is going to be different. And I hate to say this is a black or white thing. This might be a black or white thing. I knew when I started that I would never get the automatic acceptance of a white creator because I'm not it. I knew I never was going to get the acceptance of a creator that looked like this, even if he was black, right? I wasn't going to get that either. I knew I wasn't going to get the acceptance of a tech guy because when tech got popular, I was already old. When tech blew up, I'm going to give it 2015 where everybody had, at, we're 10 years into the iPhone, well, eight years, eight years into the iPhone. Tech was here to stay, so to speak. I have been doing this mess since the seventies. I was already older, but the platforms that allowed tech to bang the, what was popping in Silicon Valley looked nothing like me. So I already knew that views, clicks, subs, the things that do, hey, let's understand this, dude. There is a beauty privilege. You and I have a similar problem. We ain't young, and people are going to look at it like, what can this geezer know about anything? But the fact is, there's nobody better to know about what you do because you have done over 100 of those. That doesn't necessarily translate into this, but I don't get my success from those things. I define my success, right? So yes, YouTube would do some silly stuff like you need 4,000 and 1,000 in order to get paid by YouTube, but let's be straight. Ad revenue is dog shit. It is absolute, okay? You can do 50 videos. 10,000 views a piece. And you're going to walk away with $600. It's not that big a deal. It's not even worth it. But if you do those same 50 videos with 100 views a piece, but every one of those videos leads to a sale of a floor, I don't know much about flows. I don't even know much about coatings to make the old floor look better, but I guarantee you they make more money than $600. I ain't that stupid. So those things don't matter to us. Most of us in here are business folks. We don't really care about 50, 11, 100,000 followers. That ain't going to do nothing for us. You know what I'm saying? It's, I was close. Emmanuel was not close to Edward. <laughs> but I, I don't think that none of like if all of a sudden if all of a sudden a bunch of people jumped onto your train but can't none of them buy a floor they ain't no good to you they just ain't right if i can send you a million people to your stream today but can't none of them buy a floor it ain't doing you no good. So don't please do not get stuck with those numbers, fam. Those numbers will jack you up. This is why I stay away from them. Vanity metrics don't work for old fat black dude. It just don't. I'm cute than a motherfucker, but it doesn't work. You know what I'm saying? Because I ain't this dude. But I tell you what, I'll, I'll YouTube this motherfucker. He made the good in the polo, but he don't know nothing about doing AI images in mid-journey. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's just, hey, not that important. So please, it, for most of us in this channel, none of us, with the exception of Paul, are cute enough to work on vanity metrics. So let it go. Jewel won't even show his damn face. Look at this fool. 
<laughs> you know what I'm saying? And yes, root cause analysis. This is something that I absolutely love to do. And I'm I learned it. I, I I think I learned it from Steve Jobs, but the reality is I learned it from my pops, Papa Huey. Like he was all like, like, let's take it apart and figure out what's causing the problem. Like he was famous for taking crap apart. Putting it back together, not that good. <laughs> taking shit apart, he always took stuff apart. And then, and June, put this back together. <laughs> so there's that. Uh, thank you, Tati. That I think, didn't we talk about that in my class? <laughs> if not, remind me to put that in my class when we do the reboot. Um, I think it's very important. And I love Tommy's question because I think it's, I think it's very important that you understand that what most of the people talk about in this game, it ain't for us. It, it's for somebody else. And actually it ain't for them either, but they, this, this, this one, this one hits hard. That's not for anybody, but people keep saying this mess and people keep believing it. And so that swells, but this is not for anybody. This is absolute crap and it needs to stop. And the sooner we stop that, the sooner we can stop people from having mental issues because they don't feel accepted or like they're winning or part of the team or the system because they get caught in these unnecessary. You got people right now sticking their finger in their neck trying to throw up because the gram told them they need to look a certain type of way. You got cats out here trying to take uh, fentanyl, not because they're in pain, but because it slows your appetite. And so they think that they're going to get skinny and then they got the bad batch that was created by the scene lowest. I bet you shouldn't say that on the stream. And then next thing you know, they did, you know, like we got people right now hurting themselves, trying to fit in. Good thing about growing up in the Husky label, we don't fit shit. <laughs> so I ain't never trying to fit in. We don't fit nothing. No way. You know what I mean? So <laughs> I think we, we have that in common. <laughs> so it, it's funny. I was talk, telling uh, my, my man Frederick about this. We were talking about this the other day. I understand where you guys are at, and I understand what you say. Well, what do you do when someone says something hateful to you in the comments? That cracks me up every time, and I'm an absolute dick about it. Why? I've been getting shady comments since I was three years old. To y'all, it's painful. Somebody said something hateful to me in the comments. To me born in the 60s with this outfit i've been getting hateful comments since i was three years old why three because that's when i understood it prior to that it was that wah, 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 wah. so somebody can some say something ignorant to me i don't think nothing about it it is not any more painful someone say something ignorant to me in the comment is no more painful than well, I don't mean you, Doc. I mean the other black people. You're cool. Nothing's more painful than, oh, you speak pretty elegantly. Okay, so I don't give a shit what you say to me in the comments. And, 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 Yes, man, it's crazy, but yeah, I, I don't, I'm sorry, I, I don't really get that. Please don't let that be, anybody in this crew, don't let none of that be part of your reality because that's not your success, man. Actually, I'm going to say this in the nicest way because he knows I love it. Every other day after we've turned past 50, every day we wake up, success. I did it. I'm here. I'm still here. So at 89 years old, when Paul wake up tomorrow, success. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Tommy, you hey, you like 10 years younger than Paul. So you woke up today, fam. Success. <laughs> success. That's what I'm talking about, bro. Let's be that. Let's be that. Dude, anything about going viral is absolutely ridiculous. I hate that comment. It, ooh, that, that fires me up. Um, Yes, what measure gets done does apply to the creator verse. And, and so it's weird because there's a vanity metric, which is about 
how many people are watching or how much time they've watched or whatever. Those pump your ego. The reason why those analytics exist, honestly, is to drive you to do more. However, here's how you take that same measurement and put it into something real. When I go into my back end and I see a comment, let me see if I can get this. If I go into my back end and I click on the comments tab and I see a comment was like, this is exactly what I needed. Thank you for this. Thank you for sharing the knowledge, right? This is what I count more important, right? Thank you for sharing this knowledge. Super sick. Uh, I don't know what the peace sign means. Uh, is there is a way to get it through windows? That's a question, but I'm asking that person a question and they can get through. Thank you for sharing. Outstanding, right? Uh, <laughs> when I get in here and I look at these things, now here's one. Uh, this person said, so unnecessarily, you can get superior uh, equivalent quality for half the price and still have a turnkey set up without using the Mac, whatever. That's what that person believes. I'm not going to be mad at her. That wasn't directly at me. That was the Mac PC thing. I don't know why people keep trying to do that. No matter what I say to Tommy, I am never going to change him from being an Alabama fan. I cannot all of a sudden get him to be an Auburn fan. And so I don't know why PC people love to say this stuff to us like we're going to switch. Um, you know what I mean? But when I get in here and I see these, these are the comments that get me going, right? Uh, this person said, thank you for this video. I just found it today, June 22nd. Uh, the first video of yours I've seen. I have a couple other questions. Yeah, whatever. So I can get into that. But those are, those are the, the, the motivations to me, if you got to use that word. Those are the, the, the gas for my Tinkerbell system is getting those, those uh, things from people. Okay, so that's what I do. Because the, the the if I counted my subs, people say all the time, "Man, you're way undersubbed." I whatever, because having those subs it doesn't equate to success to me. Success to me is I make Aubrey happy. That's cool, right? I can make Gretchen laugh until she neighbor pees herself. That's cool, right? I Paul and Luis basically <laughs> are gainfully employed because I was able to help them out and they helped me out. You know, they make my job at, and my company better just for being around. Right. Caleb and I, we get together and be like, man, I don't even know what we would do without Paul doing this part for us. That's my success, fam. You know, when I'm in the in the audience watching Gigi and Keely on stage, and, and Keely is wrecking shop, making Roberto Blake's face leak, ha <laughs> ha, that's my success. 15,000 subs don't mean shit. Watching Keely jaw drop Roberto Blake in real time, and there's people in this chat that was in the room to see it happen, we was like, ha ha. LGL, baby. <laughs> Take that, Roberto Blake. I love Roberto Blake. He's my friend. I'm not clowning. <laughs> like, we have deep conversations. But watching Keely do that, man, that was, who? I, I was walking on freaking sunshine. Bruh, I was walking on sunshine seeing that happen. Uh, do you feel the success in the creative versus sometimes mistakenly measured by whether or not the video system has to last an hour or more? I, uh, I don't really get that one, but I, again, I, my success comes from actual outcomes. That's what I, I, I like to see accident, po positive outcomes. I think the hard part about me explaining to you what my success is, is it completely going to be different from you. Everybody has a different version of success. Hey, this is going to hurt some folks, but a whole bunch of my female friends have wanted their success to come from their male compatriots finally seeing them as equal. Does that mean that they're not successful? Because trust me, it ain't happened yet. Right? To this day, 
Keely still has to struggle with the misogyny of her hockey thing. Does that mean she's not successful? Hell no. She has a whole community of people that look at her as if she walks on water. What those other idiot dudes think about her ain't life. All that matters is we like her, her community likes her, and Mr. Corey still likes her. So F that dude who's still a misogynistic prick to Keely. He won't say that to my face. You know what I'm saying? I, 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 that's, that's the success to me, right? She doesn't need to gain that person's thing. No more. And she learned that a lot whenever. I don't know. It had nothing to do with me. I guarantee she learned it before us. She learned it when she got her 92, right? She's told us the story, so we, know, we all know, right? Um, dude, there are people in this country who would never look at me, Paul, Luis, Gretchen, Keely, Kathy, Tatiana, even JP. There's people that would doubt JP because his accent is thick from Tennessee and they accent is thick from Alabama. So I don't look outward to success. My success is in here. See, you say it right there. Aubrey, you say it right there. It is so hard though, Kat, and I agree with that. I don't want anybody to think this is easy. It's definitely something that takes work. It, it especially for us, right? The the great thing about being the other is you know that no matter how good you do, someone always going to look at you stupid. So I just don't even think about it. I'd never let that get to me because that would be life-consuming, right? That's the one advantage to being the other is that would be life-consuming. Yes, uh, beauty bias and the halo effect, 100% true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he is. There it is. Uh, <laughs> Tyson Beckford is an AI image from Mid Journey. Uh, that's not actually my term. I don't know where it came from, but I definitely use it a lot. Uh, I'm just going to watch it silent. And then, then you say you're cute. Sorry, bro. Sorry. Um, yeah, I, I probably lost what the hell happened in the comments because I was using my stupid scroll wheel. Uh, dude, th bro, this is my life. We avoid labels on a daily basis, but not, oh, you guys are talking about different kind of lazy, lazy, right? Right. Thank you, June. Asian hate is definitely not a new thing. <laughs> you know, it's funny, Tommy, that one. <clears throat> That was tough because I think what happened in our time, we hit it. It hurt like hell, but we hit it. Now people don't hit it. I hit it. I even talk too much. Now people don't hide it. I, and people are offended by the fact that they no longer can say hateful shit and I'm supposed to let it roll off my back. I do because I was raised that way. But my, there's people that don't. And... We have to accept the fact that we just can't say hateful things because they're supposed to, I'm rubber, you're glue, it bounce off of me and stick to you. Like, those those rhymes were cute, but those rhymes weren't really real. And then so I know that a lot of us older, leathered, seasoned folks be like, oh, you shouldn't let it hurt you, but... No, you shouldn't. I will still stand by my ground. No, you shouldn't. But does it hurt? Yes. I know people that could take a full blast punch to the face. And, hmm? But if you ain't trained for boxing, you can't take that. So it will hurt you. If you're trained for boxing, we were trained for boxing. We were trained to take hateful comments. We, I, dude, let's roll this back to 69. I roll up in your neighborhood, I'm going to hear a lot of hateful comments. And honestly, up until a couple years ago, I could and I would never hear them. They still happened. They happened in silence. But now people think it's cool to say that shit again. So that new let me release and say whatever the heck I feel like saying has bumped up against I don't accept that. 
So what people are actually mad at is not that they can't say it anymore. It's just that when they say it now, they reach resistance. They get distraction. Before, you could say hateful shit and nobody resisted it. So you were hashtag winning. Now you say some ignorant shit, people push up against it. Like, nah, man, you can't say that stupid shit no more. And then y'all turn and and y'all get mad. Like, I mean, not just y'all. I mean, I won't say y'all. It's not, we get mad. Because even I will say some dumb shit now that I used to be able to say that I forget you can't say no more. Why? It was wrong when I said it back then. On, let's be fucking honest. I used to say all the time, I'm going to admit this right here, and I'm going to admit this with, please forgive me for I have sinned. My brother Daryl is LGBTQ plus AI, whatever the terms are. When I was younger, before I got my stepbrother Daryl, when you riding a bike and you got a fly tire and your whole rest of the day was jacked because we had plans to go fishing, we would say some dumb shit like, that was gay. Right? If something happened that didn't happen the way we wanted to happen, we would be like, you know, teachers like, nah, y'all got to stay after and do this, 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 and this. We'd be like, man, that's effed up. That's retarded. We used to say dumb stuff like that because we didn't know no better. Society got better. Society taught us we're not supposed to say that. How dick is it to say that I can't say those anymore so my world is effed because I no longer can say some stupid shit I should have never said in the first place? It's not that we, you can say it, but now there's consequences. There should have been consequences a long time ago, but the people that we were hurting didn't feel like they could speak up. I sat there every day with a gay brother at home, but out in the streets with my friends, I would use that term because it was accepted, not knowing that I am secretly crushing a family member. It took leaving home, being here in Polynesian society, way more accepted than back on the East Coast, way more accepted than in the hood. Fafa Finge is part of culture in Samoa. Mahu is part of culture in Hawaii. When I got to learn and I was never anti or homophobic, none of that. I just didn't know what I was saying was dumb. But when I learned it, I didn't stand back and try to defend my ignorance. Our people need to stop with that. Oh, PC is ruining. No, PC ain't ruining shit. We finally learned not to be a-holes. If you want to be an a-hole, be you. But accept the consequences. You some shit you shouldn't say. And I still say dumb shit to this day because I was raised wrong on that particular thing. Some folks was raised wrong because they family, they eat spicy. That don't make them bad people. That just means they suck. They can't eat spicy food. <laughs> man, sorry for that rant. <laughs> but, man, I some somebody will say some dumb. See, look, you can't tell us that we're not brothers, right? We have different moms, different dads. His mom and dad adopted me when I came here and kept me out of jail, kept me from being an asshole. You can't, no one can tell us that we're not brothers. Some folks not knowing any better have said some stupid Asian hate shit to me. And I'm like, do you know who my mom and dad is? I have had, Freaking people say dumb shit, and I had to check them. And then someone was like, oh, you stupid. What do you mean I'm stupid? His family's Korean. 
So yeah, that shit's real and that shit's painful, bro. We have got to learn that just because it used to be some kind of way at some point in time, it ain't that way no more. And that's life. That's what people say. It, it used to be we had to go outside and catch a dinosaur to eat. So shit changes. Be adaptable. Let's be Gumby. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so I know I'm behind like a mug in these comments. I'm sorry. But I don't know why that one that one really fires me up because I, I hate seeing people say crazy stuff because they used to be able to say it. And I'm sorry that sidetracked this conversation, but uh yeah that that wouldn't i don't know how i even got there but i'm sorry that really really drives me crazy and, yo mk good to see you bro so many uh variables out of our control focusing on things that we can change um we've we've been conditioned to constantly throw up objections to our efforts boom <laughs> yep go along get along yes that was the way it was and, you know what it's it's super crazy, but we have spent so much time cutting other folks down to make ourselves feel better. Every single one of it hurts, right? Yes, I agree. I I used to we used to it used to hurt us, but we didn't want it. We, our version of tough was being able to ignore it, and that ain't any better. So it's it's funny. <laughs> Not he's 73, you were born in 73. They're different, June. <laughs> They're different. <laughs> oh, oh, you guys are the same. All right, never mind. <laughs> never mind. Uh, yo, let me see what wait, serving is. You know what? You're so wise. I love how you quickly organize your thoughts automatically. Uh, if you're gonna take thank you. Uh, you know what. Here's the thing. You already know how to do this. Let's be honest right here. You do not get to call yourself Silverhead anything if you don't know how to do it. I'm going to tell you things that are factual, and I'm guessing, but I can take this guess with a certain amount of probability, and that's the thing about taking a risk like this. I am taking a risk with this, and I will be happy to be wrong. Trust you me, from the bottom of my feet, I will be happy to be wrong about this. But I'm going to take this guess with a certain level of confidence. One, because I don't mind effing things up. And two, because maybe it's part of my reality. The reason why you feel that you aren't fluent or articulate enough is because we grew up at a time where people always told us that we were not enough. And enough of these people told us that we're not enough that we started to believe some of the hype. Don't, don't, don't believe the hype. <laughs> Sorry, one of my favorite songs. <laughs> um, so because of somebody else's statements, we wear that cloak like Harry Potter. And we don't think we are enough. I have been with a fitness trainer who had a major stutter, but he was a good trainer. He wasn't ticular at all. He would like every time. But you know what? He knew what the heck he was talking about. And I was more than happy to listen. When I was going through my bodybuilding phase, I was more than happy to listen to Dom. Because Dom knew what the heck he was talking about with his impediment. Think I'm lying? Lou mother Ferrigno. Ain't articulate. Ain't fluent. Can't hear half of what you say. Mr. Mother Freaking Universe. Whoa. This is a limiting belief. I love you, and I want you to say to yourself, I no longer accept this as my reality. I'm good to go. It's that simple. I know it sounds crazy. You got to trust in your mans. I love you. You show up. So you're already trying. So try this one. <laughs> 
It's just like fitness, right? I can't do the tree pose anymore because some of these parts don't work. But I can, you always say, you guys tell us, do an adaptable thing. You can't go on your knee to do this. Sit in your chair and do this. If your knees don't allow you to go on the floor and get to this position, sit in the chair, still keep your core, keep your back, and do this. Adapt the pose. I want you to adapt the pose to say, I am fluent enough. I will get better. Ain't nobody in your training that started out with a five pound weight can't do a 15 pound weight now. But had they started with a 25 pound weight, they'd be like, I can't do this. I'm out. So you as a trainer, listen, I know you want to jump to the 25s. Trust you me, start with the five and then work your way up. So adapt the pose. Listen to your boy doc and adapt the pose. I am good enough. Now I will get gangster in the next couple of months. Challenge accepted. Wait, I can't say that. You have to say that. <laughs> anyway, I appreciate that comment though. Uh, yes. Thank you, fam. I thank you. Dude, this is a choice. I want Al, I want you to notice, my brother. This is an absolute choice. Everyone has the choice to crank their energy up higher. We, I, man, I had this conversation with my niece just yesterday. She said, okay, she, she's 13. She finally got her IG account, and now she's starting to realize that people come to the gram to say stupid stuff. And she goes, oh, God, another one of these stupid people I got to block. And I was like, Pump the brakes. That's not a swear word. I just want to wake everybody up. Okay, here you go. <laughs> I was like, listen, pump the brakes. Here's what I want you to do for me. Every time you block these people, celebrate it. Be like another one, another person that I have made a decision to get rid of so they do not affect my glow. And she was like, what, what? But it's so irritating. I go, no, it's not. It's so invigorating. And she was like, what? And I was like, getting, <sighs> I got to block another person. That is a choice. If you're like, oh, hell yeah, I get to block another person. That is a choice. Red pill, blue pill. If you take this one, it's exciting to make decisions not to accept bullshit in your life. But if you go, <sighs> it's always a defeatist mode. So look at it from a positive mode. I get the this person out my face. And if you do it that way, you will not be disheartened by the amount of BS out there. Social media is not bad. What you consume on social media is bad. If you still see negative in your social media feed, it's because you are not commenting on upvoting and giving attention to the positive. What happens when a negative post comes up, you'll read it, You'll move the thing up. You read the comments. Sometimes you click and dig deeper in the comments and you'll scroll and you'll scroll and you go, all these people are freaking stupid. But you know what you just did? You just told IG to feed you more of that negative. <laughs> now, when you see a positive post of Gretchen walking Aldo around and the deer come out and then Aldo be like, and you go like, oh my God, Gretchen, your dog is so cute. Boom. When you see a post and it's, you know, Aubrey in her golf cart where her peach shake, boom. My God, Aubrey, I need to get a peach shake, right? When you see a post from Tommy that says, I just had a meeting and, uh, you know, Be Go Creek, Louisiana uh, University want to buy a new basketball floor and a new indoor tennis court, boom. Tommy, congratulations on your success. If you do that, you would no longer see the hateful BS. Curate the positivity in your space. Tell negativity to get the out your face. You know what I'm saying? Boom. Years ago, I wouldn't have been allowed to be a student at Rucker University, much less a professor. Thankfully, yes. <laughs> now one is a joke. Why you got to do that to me, June? Now you know it's in there. <laughs> now you know it's in there. Ah, uh, boom. 
D- dude, I man, I just had this conversation with a friend, and I know they're probably pissed at me. But hey, I'm I'm crazy like that. I'm strange. I'm gonna say it out loud. I I saw my friend I hadn't seen in a minute. They were with their two year old, and the two year old ran behind the mom's leg and then went like this, as two year olds do, right? They go like this. And then she said, oh, she's just shy. And I was like, stop. Never can say that in front of her ever again. They go, no, but she's just shy. I go, no, she's not. And don't you ever tell her that. Because you tell it, you know the struggles you talk about in your Instagram feed about why people don't treat you with the level of respect you deserve for the amount of dopeness that you are as a marketing person? Uh, Yeah, that. That was developed way back, Buzz, when your mom and dad used to say you were shy. Because you know who doesn't get tagged with shy? Mel Robbins. You know who doesn't get tagged with shy? Shalene Johnson or Amy Porterfield or, you know, they don't get tagged with shy. Why? Because uh, they made a decision or somebody made a decision never to say, never repeat that shy word in front of your children. Most of y'all are too old to have young children, but uh, Janice, I know she's still creeping in the back. Never say baby girl is shy. You somebody setting you up for failure with teaching you that BS. The reason why they run in the back is it's the safety position. And the reason why they poke the head out is the curiosity position. Safety and curiosity does not equal shy. They're not hiding because they're shy. They're humans and humans protect the body. So the body protection from the minute you're born is hide behind a parent's leg and then the curiosity of a gangster lean out. Somebody told you that mess years ago and they messed you up. Now you wake up in the morning to be like, I'm not shy. I'm not timid. I am articulate. I am gangster. Let's get this. That's it. That's what I'm speaking on. The hundred percent. You got to trust you are enough. You have got to trust you are enough. Fam. Hey, listen, MK. I would like to hear from a person, especially like as an actor, when you decide to put yourself out there and you know, this role is for you and you don't get cast, and you know that it's on some BS. Like, how did you deal with that? Those are the adapted overcome stories you got to tell, you know? Like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'll be blocking people before they say one word. Uh, I hope there's enough room uh, in the box for all the haters. That's what I'm talking about. Right. Be be glad she's mature enough to make the decision to give them the booth. Yes. If you add positive commenting time to your daily schedule, 10 minutes of that each day will will really, really help. Um, boom. <laughs> hey, I think I was probably younger than that when I was originally told all the dumb stuff. You know what? I also had to remind myself. They was telling me these things out of love. They thought they were helping. They thought they were protecting. You know what I'm saying? When my family first told, this wasn't my direct mom and dad. This was like some of my cousins in them. Uh, Luckily, you know, my real mom was a little different. (laughs) Um, They were like, oh, we were just always told like what the man was going to take from us, right? We were always told that the man was scary. And I understand because they came from JC South, right? So they thought that, you know, when when the popos was riding around, they was coming to get you. Like they grew up in the Jim Crow South, so they were afraid of the man. I was born just after this, so I didn't grow up in it. So I didn't have the same fear of you know the sheriff and the boogeyman or the clan coming to get me, right? So I grew up up north, so I had a different safety net. But when I would go visit my cousin in from the South, they was all scared of certain things that I wasn't afraid of because I had the privilege of being born up North. So I didn't have those same fears. So when they were like, yo, man, 
you like your best friends are white? And I'm like, yeah. Like they didn't even know no white folks. Cause they were still dealing with the struggle of Jim Crow South. They they was like, yo, you what the how how do you and there was questions. You know, so it's kind of funny. But just just being born at a different time and place puts you in different perspectives. And I decided I wasn't going to listen to all of the rest of that noise. And I continued to intermingle myself and learn different cultures. And I had, you know, Korean friends and Japanese friends and Chinese friends. And from the time I was a kid, like I was not going to be labeled anything back then. I decided to blend it up. And I think I became better for it. You know, so it, it's literally, it doesn't matter what they told you. You can fix that decision anytime you're ready. <laughs> That's funny. You can tell. <laughs> uh, all right. See, we're 110 minutes. We're striving for positive changes and putting aside our difference and growing as a family. Yes, JP, I appreciate that. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I, I think that's from a movie, dude, but I like that one, right? I'm good enough, I'm smart enough, and doggone it, people like me. Uh, 100%. That is definitely the life of an artist. Uh, you need to find joy in the process of putting yourself out there because you're going to face a lot of rejection based on superficial stuff. See? Boom. Even when you're handsome as, NK, as MK, you can still catch some BS. So just want to let y'all know. <laughs> like, it's out there. You can always catch some BS. Listen, gang, uh, we're going to wrap this because I got to get ready to do the, the gold class for those who are out there. <laughs> okay, it's from SNL. But number one, a uh, big ups to Tommy. You brought some really good questions today, and thank you for that. I just want to remind you, and please make sure you go back and rewind this, check it, listen to it again, understand where you're at. But just know that Tommy's questions are the reality of being a creator. It is very easy to let somebody else tell you what you're supposed to do or how you're supposed to feel, right? It's very easy to get caught into that. And once you get that, you're legit stuck. It will mess you up. So I need for you to decide what success looks like for you by yourself, right? I need you to dig deep, know you got this, right? This is your time and nobody can take it from you and refuse to lose, right? Now, I think that for my people like uh, Silverhair Fitness and for Miss Wheezy, if you're still here, listen, if you're really stuck on your purpose game, reach out to me. I would, I want to get you started because I can't stand to see folks who are good people stuck without their purpose. Like, it's, 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 tough, it's tough cookies, but this is important. Right? This is important. I'm going to tell you why. Mom and dad, June and I, couple of employees, we had this store called Video Life. And <laughs> bless her soul, mom was so caring and giving that she wanted us to be open round about 364 days a year so people could get what they wanted, right? She was so concerned about making sure that people can get what they want. We would be open on Christmas because if somebody got a new TV for Christmas or a new DVD player for Christmas, they might need a new TV or a DVD player or VHS player or whatever to go with the that. Somebody who got a new camera might need film or sorry, tapes or memory cards or something. So we were open all the time, right? Like to her, she didn't want anybody to be disappointed because they got their new stuff and we weren't open. They 
in in the the twenty some odd years of the store, I think they took vacation to Tahiti like once. They never took off, and I know from conversations that Pops probably wishes that he had taken mom on these vacations more. Like he would save up the money and have it. Like we could just go, but would not relinquish the power to go. Knowing good and well that June and I, or June and my friend Chris, or June and my friend Ryan could run the store, but they refuse <laughs> to relinquish that thought. Because they just wanted everything to be good for everybody. They wanted every customer to be happy. They wanted every sale to be perfect. And I just want to remind you that every second counts. Because I think the thing that probably broke my dad's heart the most was when mom started to get that dementia thing. As I wish I had it done more. And I heard a good conversation the other day. If you listen to anybody over 80, they don't talk about what they done. They talk about what they should have did. Reassess, people. It is time to freaking reassess. Yeah, man. We June and I could have ran that damn store. We could have ran that damn store with an eyes closed. We could have ran that store with me coming to work drunk still. <laughs> Shut up, June. <laughs> He's like, listen, just hide in the back. Tell mom you're gonna go count TVs and tell you sober up, huh? <laughs> the night after I threw up on June's Lexus, <laughs> we could have ran that store. But they just wanted everything to be perfect. Every dot crossed, every T crossed. And mom and dad just didn't take that. And I it's a I don't want to say I feel bad for them because I do, but I want to take that as a lesson to myself. I ain't doing that no more. You you know what I'm saying? When it came time to give back my lease and stick to one car. I hate it. Like I miss having two cars right now. Uh, June's probably in the same boat. We miss having two cars right now, but you know what? It feels really good though. In the course of about two lease payments, two insurance payments and electricity for plugging my joint in that's round trip tickets to Japan for two weeks, every three months of not having that extra car is another two weeks in Japan I get to spend, right? This year, when Manchester came to the United States and the tickets to the game was $500 a piece, I was like, we going? That would have been a payment for the whip. That would have been insurance for the whip. So on the 20th, I'm going to SD for a week, staying in the luxuriousness of hotels and eating all the tacos and bringing Karen and moms. And I'm about to enjoy myself because I watched my dad fuck it up. And I ain't doing that. You know, my brother just came back from overseas. He just came back from Korea and Japan. We learned <laughs> the hard way, but we learned. So now we have to take him with us in our memory to go there. Don't do this to yourself, folks. Every single one of y'all can win. But you letting somebody else program your shit. I'm about to get the stream taken down by the advertisers. I don't care. <laughs> you letting somebody else hold you back with
their BS. I wish every single one of y'all could be as dope as my pops, but don't do the dumb shit they did just then. I wish every one of y'all would have an opportunity to meet this man. But you're meeting him now between June and I. We're being him for you now, but we're fixing some things. We're, we're just in the script. According to my dad, <laughs> we're doing a 3-2 pull down to make this more obtainable for you. <laughs> June would laugh at that joke. That won't make no sense to none of y'all, <laughs> but it'll make sense to my brother. So, yeah, every second counts, folks. Please, please believe. And if you're feeling something that you feel alone, you are not alone. You got the whole entire drop squad to help you out. <laughs> yeah, I, I can't wait. I can't wait. Uh, that's even more funny too. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, thank you guys for coming today. Let's get this purpose thing figured out, fam. Cause I I can't see y'all I can't see y'all struggling like this. It it does it doesn't doesn't work for me. I will take all of the yelling and screaming and, and pain and comparison and all that other crap you deal with. And I will show you how to just fight it like freaking Fruit Ninja. And that's purpose. Purpose is the best painkiller in the world. Purpose solves headaches. Purpose solves cramps. It don't do shit for sinus. I'm sorry. That one it can't fix. But uh, there you go. All my video people that know, they know. <laughs> they know. Anyway, dude, my dad was do every once a week. June and I had to hear this lesson that we heard a couple hundred thousand times, but it was always about that three two pull down life. Uh, big ups and love to you all. I appreciate you, fam. We'll see you again on Tuesday. And uh, yeah, if there's anything that you want to know, you want to learn, you want us to dig deeper into, just let me know. You know, let me know if you want to support the channel in any way. Uh, yeah, hit the like and subscribe button. Bring a friend that needs to hear this mess too. Hit up the old Merchy Merch shop and then jump into the Discord. There you go. All right, I will see y'all. Go Squad, I'll see y'all in a minute. Love you. Peace out. A-Town Stump. City of mine. How I love, how I love the city of mine It never gets me down City of mine How I love, how I love the city of mine